Welcome dear viewers to yet another class of Democracy Ki Paatshala. Today we'll be asking some more basic questions about Indian elections to ma'am. So let, without much ado, let's start. Uh, so ma'am, today I'm going to begin this class with a very basic question. What is a general election? Yeah, I think it's very basic, but many people are not clear about general elections. So we have in order to understand general elections, we have to understand what is by-elections. So by-elections takes place when any vacancy arises or uh, any candidate uh, uh, for any reason gets disqualified. So when in parliament or state legislatures, one or two seats are vacant for uh, vacancy, ke karan, तो हम उसको बाई इलेक्शंस बोलते हैं तो बाई डेफिनेशन जनरल इलेक्शंस इज व्हेन ऑल द मेंबर्स ऑफ एनी पॉलिटिकल बॉडी आर टू बी इलेक्टेड एट द सेम टाइम जैसे लोकसभा इलेक्शन हो गया या स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली इलेक्शंस हो गया जिसमें सभी मेंबर्स को एक टाइम पर ही हम इलेक्ट कर रहे हैं तो उसको हम जनरल इलेक्शंस बोलते हैं जबकि नॉर्मली uh, ऐसा कंफ्यूजन रहता है कि जनरल इलेक्शंस है जिसमें आम लोग पार्टिसिपेट करते हैं या राज्यसभा का इलेक्शन जनरल इलेक्शंस नहीं है ऐसा कुछ नहीं है इवन जैसे प्रेसिडेंट का इलेक्शन है इसको आप जनरल इलेक्शंस ही बोलेंगे लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल का राज्यसभा का मतलब एक पॉलिटिकल बॉडी का एक एक जो समय पूरा का पूरा इलेक्शन किया जाता है तो उस हिसाब से यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड ओके so let's come to another basic concept universal adult suffrage uh, india chose this on 26 january in 1950 and at that point of time this was seen to be a revolutionary uh, aspect uh, not many countries had this universal adult franchisee or suffrage so let's first understand what does this term mean and what were the compulsions or uh, you know the reasons why india chose this in its constitution. Yeah, you are right. When you say it's a revolutionary step, uh, because in other countries, uh, people have fought for long. But our constitution is, you can always say, it's an act of faith. So our constituent uh, assembly has uh, uh, put lot of post, lot of faith in our people and have introduced universal adult franchise now conceptually speaking universal adult franchise it establishes uh, the concept of political equality and uh, which is the essence of democracy so political equality means that irrespective what is your gender class what is your caste race you should be given voice in the system of governance historically we have to understand that uh, initially there used to be property based qualification and uh, the working classes were denied this opportunity and that was the reason that uh, marx and the other left intellectuals they proposed direct action because workers were not given opportunity to participate in an election another thing is women have been excluded and there has been a suffragette movement fine so universal adult franchise aims to achieve political equality which is the essence of democracy and the second thing is it is it, it establishes the notion of universal citizenship that in the eyes of a state, every citizen is equal. So the idea of universal citizenship is also inherent. Moving on to another uh, concept, first past the post. It's a concept that we all have heard or read, but there's so much confusion regarding what it means in comparison to proportional representation. So ma'am, yeah, uh, see, elections are, uh, as you know, heart and soul of democracy, especially procedural democracy. Now, over the period of time, 
what we see electoral systems have been evolving so there are two major types one is the majoritarian system where the winning candidate has to gain majority and the other is proportional representation proportional representation are supposed to be more democratic because uh, in proportion like the idea is uh, this proportional representation the idea is that different sections of the society should get represented and with the idea of proportional representation is associated the idea of consociational democracy democracy which is based on consensus now the earlier systems or present uh, or you can say the system which we have for lok sabha and rajya sabha we do have proportional representation as far as president selection is concerned rajya sabha is concerned so for lok sabha and state legislative assembly we have majoritarian system and majoritarian system establishes majoritarian democracy um there are different types of majoritarian system and as you said first past the post system so first past the post system is uh, where a winning candidate just need a simple majority or it is often also called as plurality system means if you get one more vote you get elected and this concept of first past the post system is uh, taken from uh, the idea of uh, those race etc like whosoever reaches to the goal first you can also understand it through the concept of winner takes all now this first past the post system is uh, quite simplistic but uh, in terms of democracy you can say that it establishes uh, sometimes a uh, very minority representation and uh, many votes get wasted because it is like one candidate gets a uh, vote and the other candidate even if gets one more vote the other one will be uh, having no representation so even in india law commission has recommended that we should soon be shifting towards proportional representation ma'am uh then why do we choose proportional representation for uh, nominating our president yeah so proportional representation see uh, we have this fptp system for lok sabha and for state legislative assembly and now even for panchayats because a uh, common man in india has not been that much literate and there are a lot of technicalities in proportional representation and i believe today the situations are different uh as far as president is concerned why proportional representation is uh, uh introduced is that president is a symbol of a state and he should not be representing or should be seen as a representative of only one particular party so proportional representation you have single transferable vote system where a winning candidate has to acquire a quota of vote fine so that minimum quota of vote concept ensures that he has to have support of a large number of parties to ensure the legitimacy of this institution uh, this proportional representation has been introduced and uh, since uh, we uh, expected that the persons who will be participating in these elections uh, they will be comparatively more educated and it will be dif less difficult on the technical front to go for proportional representation so ma'am now that we are in the 75th year of independence uh can we actually think of shifting from first past the post to proportional representation yeah i think it's a high time because uh, around the world what we are seeing is the growth of majoritarianism and uh, scholars like js mill they have highlighted that democracy cannot be a tyranny of majority and majoritarian democracy end up 
into some sort of totalitarianism and takes away the soul of democracy. So democracy has to be consociational, democracy has to be representative and uh, in case of India a lot of distortions have been seen like uh, there is a big difference in a vote share and the seat share. So to address many anomalies of our electoral system uh, we should be moving ahead and I have full faith uh, like in Indian citizens that uh, they will be in a position to go ahead and go for this uh, system and as our literacy levels have improved drastically so definitely it's a high time uh, not only we should think we should uh, take steps to go ahead with towards proportional representation. Thank you ma'am. So with this we are going to wind up today's class, uh, Democracy Ki Parshala class. But like all uh, classes, we are going to leave you behind with a small homework. I'm going to give you a trivia and in the comment section, I would urge all of you to write if it has made any impact after more than three uh, decades. The trivia is that in the 61st amendment in 1988, the minimum age for voting was decreased from 21 years to 18 years. Do you think that this amendment has made a change today? So please leave behind your comments and ma'am will definitely look at it. And in the next class, we can, you know, just briefly touch upon the different kind of comments that come across. With this, we are going to wrap up today's class. This is a small tribute from our end for the 75th year of uh, independence. Azadi Kamahotsav. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.